Buff of Thimble Hooks, thanks for stopping by today. Today is a diff little bit different. I am going to share with you my six top hacks or tricks or tips that if you're not using, you should be. I use these ones all the time, so you're going to want to learn how to do these too. And I hope you just be a lot faster and have a few tricks up your sleeve. And I'm going to give you six hacks right now. And you want to watch all of them because I might have saved one of my favorite ones for last. But watch all six of them. Let's get started. All right, the very first one that I'm going to show you is if we pretend this was really, really long. Oh, I didn't chain enough. I lost count of my chains. And I need to add more chains. I know of two ways to do this that are really easy. This one is amazingly simple. So I'm going to show you the easiest one first. All we have to do is take the other end of our yarn. So I'm just going to pull up this loop so I don't lose my stitch. Make it nice and big because we're going to go back to him in a little bit. But we're going to go back to our very first chain that we ever made right by our slip knot. We're going to go in here. Put your hook in and using the other end of your yarn. This is so easy that you're going to go, how did I never think of this before? This is just amazingly easy. I'm going to go into that first one and chain as many as you missed the first time. This could be easy if you're counting to 100 or something and you accidentally skipped 10, you went from, you only chained 90, oh no. And then you can finish off this end when you know you have your correct number of chains now. Just finish that one off. And we go back to our original loop and continue as if you never missed a chain. So there we go. Even though there is a little bit of a noticeable spot right here, you'll be able to recover, especially if you're putting a border on it. Because obviously if it was this small, I would have just frogged all this out and started over. But if you had already started a giant afghan and you found out your counts were wrong for whatever design you were making, that would make you sad. So now you have the ability to extend on the other stitches. And when you do the next row, they'll pull each other together. And really the only thing you have to worry about is these two little ends. So that's one way to extend if you accidentally chain too few. Now I know another way. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks. And here's the second way. I prefer the first way because it's just really fast and really easy, but this one can work too. I only like to use this one if I only missed a couple things. I just don't care for this one as much. So we have our working yarn we're on our loop, working yarn here. We're going to yarn over and go through our very first chain that's right by our slip knot. Very first chain you made. And we'll pull up. We want to pull through this chain once. And now pull through that chain one more time. And we're going to mark that so you can see it in just a moment. Now you can complete your double crochet. So this right here is our new chain. So we're going to do that again. Go through that marked stitch. Yarn over and pull through the first loop once. Yarn over and pull through that first loop one more time. That's our new chain just made and now finish your double crochet. See what I was saying here before, I only like to do this one if I only have to add a few. This is my tip, trick, or hack number six for adding chains if you accidentally chain too few. Let's move on to number five. This is not even really that special. It's something that you've probably seen me do a hundred times. But I think it's very important because it makes a very nice finished edge. So we're just going to chain a few here and I'm going to show you how I make my first row in my chain have a professional edge. And what we're doing is we're going to work in these little back bumps. Turn your chain over so you can see the ridges. Instead of the normal chain, we're going to turn it over so you can see these. And we are going to do a single crochet into each one of these little bumps on the back all the way down. 
and I've done this on many projects on my YouTube channel. So I'm sure you've seen this a hundred times. You probably want to have this one up your sleeve when you're making something that you're not going to put a border on. This helps get a very nice edge. And there's my last stitch right here. So I did all those single crochets. And now you can see that my original chain looks just like this. And it resembles very closely, if not exactly, how you will end when your piece is all complete. If you are putting a border on it, that's even better because now you have real stitches to work in instead of just a half a chain. Right here, this would be a whole stitch. Just like this side is. So there's hack number five. You've seen it a hundred times. I do use this one all the time because this really is one of my favorites just to make a nice professional edge. So let's move on. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. And number four is a different way to reduce instead of doing a single crochet or a double crochet two together, especially for single crochets like this. I did that all along here. You can't see my reduces. You cannot see anything that I reduced or any of my reductions here because I did a little bit different way using skip stitches instead of a single crochet two together. So I'm going to show you that right now. I'm just going to chain a few here. Chain a few and make one row of single crochet and I'll meet you in just one second. Here I have a chain and I did a single crochet all the way down. Chain one turn my work and I'm going to show you a really cute little way to reduce. I'm going to do a sing few single crochets. La la la. Oh no. Now is time for a reduction. You can do single crochet two together, which is a yarn over, pull through, go through the next loop, yarn over, and pull through all three, which when you, especially when you're working with bulky yarn, you can see this stitch because it doesn't look like these other little easy peasy stitches. So instead, still need to use those two stitches, but the first one is going to be a normal single crochet and the other one is simply going to be skipped. Jump right over it. And now we don't have that bulky stitch, especially when you're working with bulky or super bulky yarn. So it ends up being a lot less noticeable and it's not lumpy, but we still have the same amount of stitches. So I'm going to go back to where we skipped again. We skipped this chain right here. So the way you do that is we're going to go back to the beginning to recreate your numbers in your head, change your pattern if you were going to. Originally I chained three single crochets and then it was time to reduce. So I would use these two. So it would be a single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet two together. So instead of three and these together, you would change this to four single crochets in a row and simply skip this stitch and jump right over to the next one. and you can barely tell. You really have to look for it. So that's another way to reduce that I like to use, especially when I'm making tiny things. Like right in here, all of these are reduces and you can't tell, there's no lumps. And right in here, on this side. Both of these sides had a reduction and you can't see the single crochet two togethers because I just added one single crochet and skipped the next one. So easy peasy. This one I use often, especially when I'm working with really lightweight yarn or making something tiny. So hope you like it. Number three, no twist in your chain. You're going to be making a long chain and looping things together. You don't want it to be twisted unless it's supposed to be twisted. You don't want to find out that you changed all those chains and linked them together and started doing all of your work. 
and then find out it's twisted and you have to rip it all out. That's no fun. So what we want is a basic, flat, no grip, no handle hook. This is the easiest way to do it. You can always change when you start working on the project to your favorite hook, but for the very first chains here, we want to use a hook that doesn't have very much of a difference in shape from the handle. So a basic old aluminum hook will be perfect. So we're just going to chain them in one, two, three, four, five, and when you get to about five or six, I'm going to go six, let's take everything down, take the end and go right through your very first chain. Now you're chaining everything right here. There is no twist and you will not have a twist no matter how many you chain. When you get to about 10, you won't have to worry about this guy too much more. You'll be able to hold him right under your thumb. You won't even know it's there. Just keep right on going. And you don't have to worry about a twist in your chain because neither end has moved. So now you know there's no twist in your chain. This could be 500 chains. It could be huge. You could be making anything in the round. It's a huge basket and you had all kinds of chains here and you don't want to recount them. Now you just pull through, chain one. Now you just start right here in your first chain for whatever your pattern is about. And you keep right on going. I'm going to mark that first stitch. I have made three so far, so I'm going to go back to my third stitch. Whoopsie. I didn't use my stitch marker. That's crazy. So even if it's a tiny project, you don't want to have to rip it out constantly because you didn't get your chain right. You had a twist in your chain. Oh no. That's no fun. If you're making hats or mittens or anything like that, you don't want to twist in your chain and have to just start over. Just totally wasted time. So this is the easiest hack in the world to keep in your back pocket. Now I made it all the way around back to my original marker and as you can see there is no twist in my chain. And now you can just keep working around and around and around. So this is one of the easiest ones in the world. Now you can change to your favorite hook. You don't have to use this one anymore if it's not your favorite hook. Now you can move on Go grab your favorite hook and continue with your project. So there's number three. Number two is make sure you know how to do a magic circle or a magic ring for anything that you're working in the round. This is so much easier than the chain two or chain four and then loop them together because you always have a very consistent, nice looking center. So here is the easiest magic circle in the world. Hold your yarn right here. I'm just going to have to use these two fingers. Pull around, make an X. Flip your hand over, you go under the first one and grab the back one. Twist your hook towards you and all the way around to grab this. Grab the other side and pull through. Perfect magic circle. Let's do that one more time. Hold your yarn here, pull around, and make an X. There's your X. Grab your working yarn with another finger, turn, now we want to go under the first loop and grab the second loop, twist your hook all the way around, go grab the working end, twist and pull through. That's all you need to do. And now you can just continue with whatever you're supposed to be doing in your magic circle. six single crochets. Pull the tail as tight as you can and you won't have any gaps. 
So there's your perfect circle. That was number two. And number one is making stacked single crochets for your turn chain instead of doing this. Chain three, skip a stitch, all this, so you don't have any of these big gaps off to the side. I don't like these and I don't like working into the chain. I think it doesn't look as professional and as finished as it could. So here's how you stack single crochets. I did a chain of 11 and I single crocheted all the way back. So now I'm going to chain three. This is the original way. We do the chain three. You're going to make a big gap. We skip this very first stitch. Skip that stitch. Double crochet into the second stitch. And then continue all the way down with your double crochets. And there's my last double crochet in this row. As you can see, there is a big gap here because that chain three counts as a stitch and so there's nothing really worked into this stitch. It's over here off to the side so you get this big gap. We are going to eliminate that gap right now. So see I have not chained like we normally would chain and turn our work. We're just going to turn our work. And in this very first spot, go in and make a single crochet. Now you want to do another single crochet, but you want to use the vertical bars right here. There's a vertical bar. Pull through and single crochet. And now continue on as you would for any other row of just double crochets. And now I'm down at the end, but now I have to work into the chain because I don't have a real stitch there. I just have that chain three that counts. And sometimes that can be unpleasant to try to get into that chain without splitting your yarn or anything. Now we'll finish our double crochet. See over here, right here I have a big gap from our first one. Right here I have a big gap because I had to work into the chain, but over here it's nice and straight. So I'm going to do that one more time with my stacked single crochets. So again, we're not going to chain, we're just going to turn our work, go right into that first stitch and do a single crochet. And then we want to do another one in one of the vertical bars of that single crochet we just made. Do another single crochet. And now continue along with all of your double crochets. There's our last stitch, or our first stitch from the other one with our stacked stitches. It's a real stitch! We don't have to work into the chain. Hooray! And finish your double crochet. See, we don't have our big gaps now. Gaps down here. Don't like it. No gaps up here. We love it. So if you want super straight edges, this is the way to do it. If you don't care, or you're going to put a nice big border on it, or you like this look, go for it. But if you want to have a nice straight edge, then you should try this method, which is just two stacked single crochets. Very, very simple. So I hope my little hacks have helped you. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks. Stop back soon. Tell all your friends about me, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.